Hello friends, welcome back to my channel and uh, today we are back with another exciting tutorial. So in this video we are going to talk about Azure Kubernetes service or AKS so uh, which is a managed uh, Kubernetes uh, service from Azure Cloud. So we spoke about how to set up Kubernetes cluster on locally and you know through you know, mini cubes using K3D. So the different kind of Kubernetes tutorial we have seen how to do a lot of uh, configurations in deploying your application in Kubernetes locally, right? But this tutorial we are going to talk about Azure Kubernetes service uh, in cloud and we are going to use Azure cloud where you, if you have like Amazon or Google there they have different kind of you know managed service uh, for Kubernetes but this tutorial is uh, for AKS okay so specifically what we will do in this tutorials is like we will see how to deploy a web application to your Azure Kubernetes service or AKS cluster okay so we will see if you are new to this AKS we will see how to create a Kubernetes cluster first then we will see how to deploy your application as well so you'll get the complete idea about this so it will be a re really interesting video uh, on this azure uh, cloud so the step-by-step -step process what we will do is like we'll create a aks cluster using azure portal so there are different ways you can use azure portal or you can use like uh, some automation script like terraform or you can even use azure cli or azure powershell to make this uh, video simple, I'm using Azure portal, but maybe in the future videos, we will use automation uh, process in that, okay? And uh, once we create the Kubernetes cluster, we will connect to the cluster and then we will run a sample, you know, uh, application with the web front, web front and, uh, you know, and uh, Redis instance in the back end, okay? So these are, these are, that's a sample application. Once we run it, we should be able to access that application from internet. And uh, that means we'll test that application through a web browsers to, to make sure that that application is running. And uh, you know, the deployments and services running in the Kubernetes cluster and the application is accessible. So that's the overall process. So before I get into the actual demo, I would request you like if you are new to my channel or if you have not subscribed to my channel, click on the subscribe button. Also like my videos, share uh, your feedback in the comment section. So let's get into the demo. So uh, you can see I'm in the Azure cloud. So if you don't have a, a login account or if you are not registered to the Azure cloud, create an account, which is uh, you can use a free account as well. So you, you have to check, you know, what are the free service available uh, in your uh, based on your registration. So for me, it's already a subscription account, which is a pay as you go. So I'm going to create uh, the Azure uh, you know, Kubernetes service. So you can see already the resource here. It's listed because I have already used it. So what you can do is if you don't uh, see that uh, you can just click on your create a resource and come to containers and you should see that uh, Kubernetes service over here as well. You can also see like you know what are the resource you create if you click on all resources you should be able to see like if you have a virtual machines or if you have a cube cluster all those running resources uh, like you know resource group everything should be listed over here okay. You can also click on create from here and you can go to containers and you can use uh, the Kubernetes service from here as well. Okay, so let's uh, you know get uh, create. I will go like uh, create a resource. Uh, go to containers. You have a Kubernetes service. I will click on create. Now, if you see, once you click on create, you we are in the page to create Kubernetes cluster, right? And we have uh, different options like basic, node, poles, access, networking. So there are a few parameters which you have to define. So and uh, I will I will tell about all those things. So first thing is you have to select your subscription so if you see you have uh, azure subscription one as for me in your case it can be a free subscription if it's applicable or you know if you have uh, your organizational subscription or you know so based on the you know which subscription you have you have to select that okay and you have to uh, select a resource group okay so if you have a resource group already uh, created you have to select that if you don't have it you can create a new one as well so i will create a new one okay so i will click on create I will name this resource group as my AKS resource group. Okay, so you can name based on your need. So I will just click on uh, create. So I have already created my new AKS resource group. Okay, and now you can see the cluster detail, right? You have to have uh, configurations to be selected. Based on that, the cost will be also changed. So if you click on it, you have options like standard, dev, cost optimized, batch processing, hardened access, and everything. If you want to know more about that, you just click on here. 
so once i click on that a page you can see taken me like you know standard what it is all about like uh, for getting started to deploy production ready application out of QBox, and you know it, it uses like ds2 un underscore v2 uh, which is you know uh, the virtual machines it will use dev uh, slash test it uses uh, b4ms you know there's a cost to optimize where it's used uh, these things and you know what are all, all things you will have like a uh, clustering auto it's there azure monitoring is available for standard and you know, availability zone you know so you can check you know what all options are available over here and uh, based on that you can select so i will go with standard okay and uh, uh, the cluster name i also need to give a cluster name i will name it as uh, my aks cluster okay so you can see the name contains only letters numbers underscore hyphens okay so you can see uh, what kind of naming convention you use and also the region okay you can use which region uh, that you know the cluster has to be created i will go with you know the us east okay because i usually see that uh, us uh, data center are low cost if you go for uh, you know other locations uh, you know like india or other location the cost of the vms and stuff are a little bit uh, costly compared to the us uh, east or some locations okay now you can also select which uh, kubernetes uh, version you want to select so default is this one you have some higher version but i think uh, it may not be stable so you can go with uh, you know that and you know api server availability is 99.95 which is the availability you know for uh, this uh, standard version now you can see the node size you know we are using ds2 v2 right because if you see the ch change size if you click on it you can see you know da dsv v2 is like uh, using two vcpus and uh, seven gb of ram so if you want to use something else you know you can select there itself like uh, the preset like dev or something which will use uh, bigger you know systems for me you know this is enough so i will go with that itself okay and the scaling method is the auto scaling and you know the node count okay it says one to five but i don't want the five nodes i'll just go with two nodes okay so for me two nodes is enough if you, for this tutorial if you want to have more nodes you can give the name or uh, numbers here now let me go to the next page so you can see node uh, pools you can see uh, it has given the name like agent pool and it has a one to two uh, node count right and it has uh, other options in the encryption type you can select uh, the encryption at rest with platform manage key so uh, i don't want to go with the custom manager i will keep the default one then then i will uh, go to the access part and also in the access part you can see the authentication and authorization it uh, says local account with uh, kubernetes are back right so if you want to you know uh, you authenticate with azure AD, uh, uh, you know uh, uh, or you know azure AD, AD authentication with azure are back so you have to select this option which is re uh, relevant for you i will go with the local account with uh, kubernetes are back and there is networking and stuff you know i'm not going to change anything i will keep it as it is uh, no oh, changes from my end unless if you want to set up something specific from the networking side i'm also not going to uh, set any container registry okay the monitoring is enabled default in the standard one and you know the azure policy is uh, default as uh, disabled i'll go to next uh, advanced option so here also i'm not going to change anything these are uh, default the tags also i'm not going to do anything i'm just going to click on review and create okay so oh, it will create a two node cluster because i have given only two nodes and it may take a few minutes as well so i will just wait uh, for the installation to be completed yep i think i think uh, we have not created it it, it was reviewing uh, you know the process now it has reviewed all whatever details we have completed uh, you can see uh, the validation is passed now we have to click on create for uh, it has to create the cluster so i'm going to click on create okay now you can see the option like initializing deployment so we have to wait for this uh, you know cluster to be created then uh, we will uh, look into that okay so i will uh, wait for the installation to be completed you should be able to see all the progress in this notification like you know deployment in progress right so all those uh, things you will be able to see there so once we have the message that all the deployment is completed we should be good to go you can see it's creating each uh, you know, resources uh, as part of the deployment 
as you can see the overall deployment is completed you can also see the notification as deployment succeeded right and we have all the resources created over here okay so you can go to go to resources and uh, you should be able to see you know the my aks cluster and under it you should see like uh, the kubernetes services node pool the configurations networking all those details should be, should be here like uh, monitoring you know you can see all those things over here capabilities so overall you know the overall uh, all details about your you know uh, your resource like my aks resource group you can see this uh, my aks cluster is part of that right so if i go to home and all resources you should see you know the the pools right and also you can see different networks it's created you can see the aks cluster the load balancer so you know when you create a cluster it's create a lot of uh, things along with that right it's it's great the identity network watcher right service load balancer you know your public ip virtual network route table so you know a lot of things is created automatically so i'll just uh, go to the home page again now what we need to do is we need to connect to the cluster right we have this uh, kubernetes cluster running we need to connect it so for that what i'm going to do is i'm going to use uh, the cloud shell so you can use you know a uh, cloud shell or you know your azure cli or azure powershell for here i'm going to use azure uh, cloud shell and i'm going to create this uh, storage uh, you know, which is required for cloud shell to run so um, let's just wait for that to be completed now we can see the cloud shell, I shell is getting started so we'll wait for that to be done then we will connect to our kubernetes cluster so what i'm going to do is i'm going to clear out the screen and you know i'm going to run this command which is uh, az aks get credential and uh, the resource group uh, for me the resource group under which the aks cluster is running is my aks resource group and i also have given the name of the cluster as my aks cluster right so if you run this command it will automatically get the credentials okay and it will connect to the cluster so you can see you know it has uh, created this uh, cube config right merge now uh, what i can do is we can use the kubectl uh, commands so kubectl get nodes you can see there are two nodes right so you can see the two nodes are running so two agents okay so once we have the details about the agents you can also see other things like get uh, parts you can see there are no parts you can also get uh, deployments or you can put get all so you can see all uh, details so what we have only running is the uh, there is a service uh, for kubernetes cluster ip right other than that there is no deployment there is no namespace uh, there is nothing as again in that so now what we have to do is we need to create you know a manifest file uh, for uh, applying our web application right so let me go to my visual studio code and this would be the application so this is the sample application from azure itself so you can see what we are creating is we are going to create uh, two deployment actually so this would be the first deployment uh, where should hit the name is azure vote back okay and it's using uh, a image uh, from redis right and it's giving some uh, resource limits like uh, cpu and memory those kind of things which we discussed in our tutorials on how to set uh, the cpu limits uh, in our uh, kubernetes supports right so that we already uh, discussed that okay now for this uh, deployment there is a service right what back service which is running on the port and there is another deployment which is uh, the front end okay so and that is running on uh, an image from azure docs right so this is the image and again here also we have uh, the cpu and uh, no, uh, memory limits right cpu request and cpu limits and the port is uh, 80 right and uh, if you see this is running as a load balancer type and we have the port 80 and uh, this would be the service for it now what we are going to do is we are going to copy this okay and i'm going to go to our kubernetes cluster and i'm going to create a file so i'm going to create a file called aks app dot uh, yaml 
and I'm going to insert so I can paste this content over here so the whole uh, you know deployment and services we have created we just copied it there now we have this file called aksapp.yml right so now what I'm going to do is kubectl apply hyphen f and the aks app yep, dot ml and I'm going to apply it now you can see it has created uh, two deployment right deployment uh, created here and this one also created the backend and front end and also we have two services one backend and front end right now if I go to kubectl get deployments you should be yeah there is a typo here so it should be cubes ctl get deployment you should be able to see the deployments running right and if i go to kubectl get svc you should get all the services running as well now if you can see this uh, service uh, you, you can see already the external ips assigned so now that is uh, running perfectly fine if you don't have you know the external ip uh, creator it will take some time you know to assign it so we have to wait okay now you can also see like you know uh, when we create uh, these things kubectl it also create you know the replica set it will also create uh, the ports so you can see all those things are running right so all, all those things as part of our configuration is running now what we need to do is it's in the port 80 so we just need to copy the external IP okay which is we just need to copy this external IP then uh, we have to create uh, you know um, we have to go to the web browser and we have to run that so let me go to the web browser and I'm going to paste this IP over here now you can see the app is running right this is a Azure voting app right so once we vote it it will store it into the Redis right so you can see it's keep uh, adding the content right so if I reset it, it is gone so you can see you know it's a, it's a voting app uh, which is uh, from a sample app from Azure itself so what we are done is we created the app okay and uh, we run our deployment and uh, you know services in the azure kubernetes cluster and we are able to access this application through the internet right so we are using the ip from the external ip and we are accessing it and since it's under port 80 i'm not going to put any port number here if you're running it on a different port you can put that port number as well to access your application so that is all the overall process so what we have done is we created a kubernetes cluster connected to the kubernetes cluster and we have run the web application on the kubernetes cluster as well so in the future videos we will do a little bit more uh, you know in different way this is the simplest way using azure portal we will see how to do all these things using you know through terraform files or you can we also see like azure cli or powershell we can use and we will also try to integrate this into as part of some continuous uh, integration and continuous deployment process using Jenkins or GitLab or those kind of things. So that would be our next video. So keep watching my videos so that you know you'll get uh, you know learning of all these tutorial, uh, all these uh, new technologies and new things which you can learn for your DevOps roles. So that is all for this tutorial. I hope it's uh, helpful for you and interesting for you as well. So give me your feedback in the comment section and as i always ask i need your support so keep uh, supporting me by sharing these videos to others and also subscribing uh, to this channel and uh, keep supporting me as usual so thank you for watching and uh, thanks for your support